So someone who has never been to New Mexico, well, how would you describe it? Blue skies. Like how I wrote a song that says, the sky is so big it wraps you up in blue. We used to drink out of the streams and the mountains and all that stuff, never ever got sick. There was nothing that could poison you or kill you, except maybe rattlesnakes and radioactivity. Carasoso, New Mexico is about an hour away from any grocery store. That's Sandia, that's a hot one. So once a week, a group called the Farmers of Rio Arriba and Rio Abajo drops off fresh produce donated by local farmers yeah. to food pantries and senior centers in the area. <laughs> in each bag of food, a flyer from the Tularosa Basin Down Winders Consortium, a group that's working to spread the word about health risks from the country's nuclear program in New Mexico. Paul Pino's been working with them for six years. Food, you know, is life, and it helps spread the word, and it helps gather people. It's kind of like bait <laughs> to give them the information. And I didn't really put the pieces together until about like six years ago when I, I saw a, a presentation by the Tularosa Basin Downwinders Consortium. And then in like two hours, it all just came, the truth just came like crashing into my life. My brother died of stomach cancer. My, my mom died of bone cancer. One of my sisters is surviving brain tumors, and the other one is surviving thyroid cancer. They're, all four that were alive at that time were affected. And during those two hours of that presentation, I thought, I, I just everything just fit together all of a sudden, you know. Pino's family was one of many that lived near Carrizoso, a bustling railway hub in the early 1900s and just 35 miles from the first atomic bomb test in 1945. His dad witnessed the atomic bomb, the blast, really? right here on this street. Oh, wow. now. What did he tell you about what well, he it saw? Just, <laughs> it just turned into daylight. He didn't know what was going on. Then he went home and went to bed. And did any members of your family get cancer after that? Oh, yeah. Almost all of them. Four, four of us had, had kidney cancer, including me. Including and you. And the family of 11. What time did you start? Locals describe New Mexico's role in the atomic program as a cradle to grave process. The cradle, hundreds of uranium mines and mills scattered across the state. After that, the production and testing of nuclear weapons in Los Alamos. And then locals say, the grave. Low-level nuclear waste is still stored here in underground facilities. Thank you. <laughs> Cancer is the second leading cause of death in the United States. And although radiation exposure is a known risk, it may be impossible to know how much radiation exposure in this community influenced a person's chances of getting cancer. Some farmers from the Rio Grande brought green chili and onions and beans and information about downwinders. Please help spread the word. What's your name? On July 16, 1945, the U.S. government detonated the first atomic bomb in what was called the Trinity Test. This is a national emergency. The culmination of three years of Manhattan Project research dramatized the summer and the blockbuster movie Oppenheimer. Why would we go to the middle of nowhere for who knows how long? Why? Why? How about because this is the most important thing that ever happened in the history of the world? Christopher Nolan's film introduced millions of viewers to the story of J. Robert Oppenheimer and the scientist he recruited for the project. And they weren't naive scientists who just didn't think about what they were bringing into the world, they felt they had no choice. The film shows the team of scientists living and working for years in the New Mexico desert at the Los Alamos National Laboratory, around 200 miles from the Trinity test site, which is here, in the middle of what's now the 2.2 million acre White Sands Missile Range. The one thing we have plenty of is space, and you'll even notice if you listen, you don't hear anything. Right. Not even 
commercial airliners flying over. They're not allowed to fly over. They're not. We have controlled airspace surface to infinity. This was part of the Alamogordo bombing range. By the time that uh, they were looking to do the Trinity test, this area was under military control and use. How much did the Los Alamos team know about the risk of radiation before the Trinity test? Not very much. The Los Alamos scientists knew radiation could do serious damage to the human body, but didn't know it could cause cancer. So did they do any testing before Trinity to see how far the fallout would travel? On May 5th, they had a very large test called a 100-ton test. Right. It had a little more than 100 tons of high explosives, and they put a radioactive source in the middle of it. They believe both that test and the Trinity test would have a fireball that would just rapidly rise to the stratosphere and disperse harmlessly around the Earth. They were very surprised to find out it did not do that. When you're close to the Earth, you pull a lot of dirt up into the fireball, and the fireball doesn't rise as rapidly or as high. Despite the surprising results of the experiment, the Trinity test kept moving ahead as planned. From uh, there to July 16th, the Monday where they conducted the test, uh, they did more and more detailed calculations trying to understand what they weren't getting right. Uh, ending the night before, they thought uh, it, there would be substantial fallout. They made extensive preparations to evacuate most of New Mexico, and they thought as long as the number didn't go above 750 millisieverts, people would be okay. We know differently today. Under normal circumstances, we are exposed to about six millisieverts of radiation yeah, per year on average. 100. So you had a 100-foot tall tower right here with the gadget up at the top. They had to call it the gadget because they didn't want to refer to it as, as a bomb in case somebody was listening in. And inside that huge ball mm -hmm. was the plutonium. And that is what caused so much destruction. The gadget's core was made of 13 pounds of plutonium, of which only three pounds combusted the other 10 pounds dispersed into the atmosphere. About an hour after the test, the plume began to drift to the northeast uh, off the White Sand Missile Range. Manhattan Project scientists realized they had dramatically underestimated the amount of radiation. Still, no civilian evacuations happened. Days later, they found a family living on a ranch nearby. Scientists estimated they'd been exposed to 2,000 millisieverts of external radiation, as much as the most highly exposed survivor would be in Hiroshima or Nagasaki. They still weren't told. Why didn't they warn people that lived nearby? Per their measurements, it was safe. And the other reason why is because this was one of the most secret projects that the U.S. had ever done. After the Trinity test, they had a cover story. They repeatedly have said Trinity was a test conducted on unoccupied government lands. But Trinity was also an accident. It greatly exceeded Chernobyl, Fukushima, Three Mile Island. It was the first nuclear accident in history and the worst nuclear accident in history. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.